Hey, I just want to say thanks for coming and really appreciate you guys taking the time. I know there's a lot of choices uh, between talks you could take and, uh, you know, just appreciate you coming and thanks for, for joining us today. Yeah. Uh, so I'm Eric Anderson. Uh, this is Kevin Nilsson. Uh, and we'll just be talking to you about future work in XDS. Uh, sorry, feature, feature work in gRPC, XDS and not. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started with some just sort of what's new in gRPC and stuff because we don't have another uh, talk and it'll it'll sort of set some of the stage. And then, um, and, and Kevin will do that and then I'll get you into the XDS uh, and not portion. So before I kind of jump into things, I did want to call out a few people in the audience. And if you are a gRPC maintainer, raise your hand. So we got a bunch of folks from the team. Um, and so if you basically have questions afterwards or want to deep dive or follow up with them, uh, feel free to do that. So raise your hand one more time. So people know why they're raising their hand. Cool. So those are our maintainers. Uh, I am curious how many people in the audience uh, have submitted pull requests that got merged in. Do you have any committers? Cool. Sergey's a maintainer, so he's done. Uh, he, we, we pay him to do several every week. Uh, anyway, uh, you see up on the on the board here. One of the things that we're doing is uh, something we call the developer facilitation meetings. And it's kind of a weird name, but really what it means is uh, we sit down. We got a bunch of questions. We'd love to hear about, you know, what you're doing, how you're using gRPC, are you happy, and is there anything we could build to make you super happy? And so I do want to encourage everyone to sign up for those. Uh, grpc.io slash meet is a great opportunity to do that. And that's also a great time for you. Uh, basically, when you, when you come in uh, to schedule those, like stay for another 10 minutes and, and ask questions or stay for another 30 minutes and ask questions. And honestly, if you, know, you schedule, go through one of these and you want to set up a different time to meet with engineers to talk about things, we're happy to do that and questions and help you build amazing grpc applications because that's what we want. Uh, the other thing, we do have a mailing list. I imagine most of you in the room know about that mailing list, but I did want to go ahead and call that out. Yeah, and as we're going along, uh, the slides are available PDF on the uh, schedule uh, app or the website, so you can get those if, we, if, if you miss a, a link or so. Cool. Thanks, Eric. So the next thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is basically, you know, the, the help that we want from all of you and what you can do to, to sort of be part of evolving gRPC and making it successful. And, you know, one of the things that we do within the team is for each of the individual languages for gRPC, uh, we go through and review all the issues and all the, the pull requests every single week. And so it's one person per language. And what we do is, uh, is we assign a different person, we call it, you know, like a rotation, and that person goes through reads the issues, tries to triage them, get them assigned to the right person. And then we meet as a team where they go through these issues, these pull requests, talk about them, get advice from others. And really what I'm highlighting is just how serious we take it and, and how much time. And so please, if there is something you don't like, if there is something you feel we should be doing better, if you think there's a bug, please put that in. Uh, we would, you know, we would love to, to try to fix it, try to make things better. Um, as, as best we can. Um, yeah, quick question. How do you choose parity between the different versions of the different languages? Yeah, so uh, let me repeat the question so everybody can hear it. So the question was, how do we keep parity among, among the different languages uh, and among you know, all the different releases? So I'm going to say there's two types of issues that get raised. One of them is... There's a memory leak in Go, right? And that's what, a, a, you know, it, there's some other problem in Java where it doesn't fall, you know, whatever it is. And they, a lot of the issues tend to be very language specific. A lot of the work that we do is keeping things modern for any of the particular languages that really don't have to do with the overall kind of underlying architecture. When we do have issues that are feature requests and things like that, we prioritize them, we do them. And I would say we, we at least make an attempt to launch features together in every language, uh, or at least the languages we call supported languages. Um, but that's something that's uh, nice to have, not a must have. And so we'd rather get the features out, especially if we know someone is using a particular language and they want it and need it. 
and we push that forward like that. Uh, we take a ton of pull requests from outside the team. So, you know, just as, as part of the triage process, we bring those in and, uh, you know, and, and merge in all of those. And so definitely feel encouraged. Uh, if there is something, you know, if you have forked, don't keep it private. Share it back <laughs> because, uh, you know, a whole team of people that uh, that's what we do. And the last point, you know, we would, we would love to graduate from incubator status. And one of the things that's super, super important to make that happen, but also is something we're interested in in general, is having more maintainers uh, and folks that aren't uh, Google employees. And so um, if you are interested, you know, start submitting some, some PRs, start submitting some issues, responding on them, and uh, let us know we, if you, that's something you're interested in, and uh, we, can, we can make that happen. Cool. I wanted to share kind of at a glance some of the, the more recent achievements. So these are things uh, kind of from the last year, last six months or so. Um, you know, we've, we've reached 66,000 stars on GitHub. So really, really, uh, you know, people are really happy and, and they're kind of looking into the internals, right? And they're trying to, to learn more about it and trying to follow the releases and things and, and deeply engaged. Otherwise, you know, it's not really necessary um, to start the project on GitHub, although we do appreciate it. Um, other things, you know, we're, we're investing more and more in the team. Uh, I put five members here, but I think it's six or seven in the last six months. I didn't really count so well, but um, we, we definitely have a large number of, of new members in, in the last six months, uh, maintainers on the, on the team working full time on the project. Uh, down at the bottom, you can see the various uh, sort of cadence for all the releases. Uh, very active, uh, you know, for, for Java and uh, C++ over, over a PR a day. Uh, is going into the repo. And then the others, you know, still very, very healthy uh, there as well. And so very active project, doing a whole lot uh, as we go. And then for our proxy list server mesh uh, product, we have a bunch of different features. Uh, we launched uh, observability that I'll talk about in, uh, in another, another two slides. And uh, we're, we're launching some custom load balancer policy stuff. Uh, some folks in the room were, were very instrumental in making the request for that, and we want to make that available. Uh, ability for custom metrics, retries, auth -Z, and uh, some outlier detection. So, so these are some of the, the key features that, that launched in the, either the last couple months or about to launch. So really exciting stuff, good momentum across the team. We're super proud that uh, not only this week were we at KubeCon, but we were also uh, at API World, and so won the uh, microservices uh, Best in Microservices Infrastructure Award there. And so that was a, a cool, uh, you know, just a cool little thing that, that we're, we're happy and proud about and uh, appreciate that that uh, has happened. Now I want to share some of the, the numbers just so you can see the scale um, of adoption and usage and it's becoming a real um, industry standard. Um, across the board, you can see for NPM uh, having 5 million uh, weekly downloads. Um, of our gRPC JS package. Uh, for PyPy, uh, two million times a day, um, you know, the downloads, and uh, it's number 52 most downloaded package on PyPy. So it's pretty impressive uh, for, for what we are. And then Java uh, for Maven, 12.5 uh, million downloads a month of gRPC context. And so these are really, really impressive numbers. Uh, we're really happy with it, and I hope everyone will continue to to help us grow those numbers and use gRPC for more and more of the things that they're doing. And this uh, is another chart that's pretty cool, is the star history. So this is from our gRPC core project. And uh, as you can see, just continues to grow with, uh, you know, really no, no, no end in sight. It's, it's, it's just continuing to grow. And so we're real uh, happy and excited. Uh, about this and, uh, you know, want to make sure everyone realizes, you know, this is where gRPC is. It's, it's very stable, very well used and continue to grow with, with big investments uh, from Google and from our, our external uh, developer community. Wanted to talk a little bit about the observability project that we launched. Uh, so we launched a, a public preview uh, on Friday. 
So Friday at 5 p.m. when you're not supposed to launch software. Uh, we launched it having, you know, uh, we really put in a lot of effort and I want to thank the team for that and, and everything that they did making this possible and got that out there. And really what it is, um, you know, it's a, it's a public preview, which means, you know, our first set of core MVP features we have in place. And we really believe that it's something, you know, the APIs aren't going to change that much. We think it's ready for folks to use. Uh, but at the same time, it's a great opportunity to work with us as we, you know, work towards GA in early next year. And so we would love to work with any of you on this product. Uh, you know, currently we're supporting uh, logs in Stackdriver or Google Cloud Logging. Uh, we have a bunch of analytics dashboards that are available. Um, alerts and notifications and traceability. And so, you know, one of the most powerful and interesting things here, I think, is the alerts and notifications where you can set a threshold on either a percentage of failures or response time or whatever it is and set yourself up for an email or however you want to be notified so that you can learn about these things through a private email that came right away rather than learning about them on Reddit. So uh, that's our new... Um, observability project and uh, you know would love uh, please reach out to Eric or I after the talk if you're interested in in helping us evolve it helping us build it and hopefully helping make it something great for all of you and uh, with that I'll hand it off to Eric so features next yes or not how do these things sort of work together so XDS, um, this is a maintainer's talk, but a lot of people may not know XDS or may not know it by that name. Um, basically, it's a control plane protocol to configure a mesh or a bunch of different nodes. Um, it's, it came out of Envoy, and it was how uh, different control planes could configure Envoy as the sidecar or that sort of idea, or a reverse proxy for that matter. Um, it is basically just a watch-based API to get configuration updates. Um, so that's most of the interesting parts are more in the, the resources that are those configurations as opposed to that protocol itself. Um, and there's a couple different implementations. Uh, you've got um, a traffic director would be one, but Istio is in beta, I believe. And then uh, some people are making their own with Go Control Plane. Uh, and all those will, will use XDS to push configuration to uh, gRPC. And so with gRPC support, you are able to get something like the mesh where you're able to do the configuration, but you don't necessarily need a sidecar. Um, so you can have still the normal direct client to server communication without those extra proxy steps. The X may be like, what's, what's up with that? So overall, XDS stands for some variable discovery service. And that variable might be a listener, a cluster, a route, an endpoint. It's not too important to know all those unless you want to start making your own uh, control plane. But um, so one particular XDS would be listener discovery service or LDS. And we'll throw around terms like LDS, EDS, CDS, these sort of things all the time. And then we're talking about listeners, clusters, or whatever would be related to that. So now we have an idea of what XDS is. Let's sort of shift to features. Um, here's a sort of sampling of features from the last year. Um, it's not too important exactly which features I've selected. It's meant to be a sampling, although this is a, a lot of the uh, higher profile ones. So we'll just sort of go through them, give a little bit of description what they are, so we sort of know what we're talking about. But we'll um, just sort of see how these impact gRPC and how, how they're sort of done. So RPC retries, we had work already underway for retries before any XDS work. And so um, these, the idea is you're going to try an RPC, and then if it fails for whatever reason, you can check what the reason is and decide whether or not to just try it again um, after delay and, and see if it works the second time. TLS security is not so much for uh, creating certificates, but it's more for configuring where the certificates can be found and what other sort of specialized TLS configuration you need. And that allows a control plane, a sort of centralized control plane to uh, tell clients what to do and to form up a secure mesh. Service authorization uh, really piggybacks well off of uh, the TLS, where you can then have, for a particular service, uh, you, you want to know exactly which other services can contact it. And so you can restrict 
Um, only, let's say, service A and B can contact service C. Outlier detection, uh, it monitors RPCs, and um, for each backend, it will sort of say, oh, look, this backend looks a little unhealthy. A lot of RPCs have failed on it compared to other backends, and so it'll decide that this backend may be an outlier and um, decide not to send new RPCs to it. Least request LB, we just have this in Java right now, but it's very similar to the round robin load balancer that's round. So instead of just uh, uh, choosing the next server in the list and just round robining over and over, this one looks at how many outstanding requests each backend has already from that client, and it will uh, send it to the server that has the least outstanding requests. Custom locality LB. This is sort of a bring your own load balancer. If you want to make your own load balancer, you implement it. And then this is some of the plumbing to use it from XDS. And then custom backend metrics sort of plays into that. It's a little different than the others, um, but be because it's, uh, it, it, it ties heavily into the custom LB policy, but it allows uh, the client and the server to exchange uh, utilization. Mainly the server can tell the client, uh, here's my CPU utilization, and then like the, the load balancer on the clients could uh, decide which backends to go to based on that utilization. So we, we, we've got this, it's a sampling. What impact do we have whenever we're making these features? Um, and if you're interested in some of these, but you're not interested in that XDS set of characters, uh, you know, how, how, what does that mean for you? So, We've been doing XDS for a little while now, and we've gotten pretty good at figuring out, okay, there's this particular set of features in XDS. How will that end up being done in gRPC? Um, and so this isn't to, to memorize or anything like that, but to just give an idea that these are the sort of the mappings that we generally do. So there's this thing in, in XDS called a listener that will turn, tend to be credentials and uh, configuration for credentials. That's like the TLS thing. Um, route, that's going to be service config. We've got clusters that most of that configuration fits better, pretty well into the LB uh, load balancer space of gRPC. And then HTTP filter is sort of mixed between listener and route, but uh, whenever you've got HTTP filter, that's pretty much going to be an interceptor. Those last two, the, the LB policies and the interceptors, that is where most new features go, and that's good because that is the predominant plugin um, uh, architecture where you can inject code into gRPC. And so uh, us doing, needing to do most features in those last two LB policies and interceptors means that that fits in actually pretty well with uh, gRPC overall. Don't be memorizing this. Um, this is a diagram from a recent GRFC. GRFC is our change proposal process. Um, so the important thing to note is there's a lot of green here. Every green box is an LB policy, and they're sort of constructed into a big tree. Um, the big tree is not actually bad in my mind. Uh, to me, this diagram shows two things. One, the plugin system is working. We're able to put quite, we're able to inject quite a bit of functionality into gRPC through the plugin mechanism. And so, if you don't want some of this, you don't, you're not going to end up using it. But if you want to, a lot of the various features, you can get them. Uh, and also, that composition is working. We're able to take these various features, put them into sort of little boxes, and then compose those into a much larger system and, and manage the, the, the complexity. So, XDS only. I was talking, these are XDS features. How do these particular features look like if you don't care about that XDS thing? Why is it not going? There we go. So to do that, we need to talk about that mapping. So RPC retries end up being uh, service config. We already had some retry work before XDS, and so XDS is able to just configure the, that existing functionality that we were already working on. TLS security, though it's going to be credentials. Uh, authorization is going to be an interceptor. The next three are all load balance. Sorry, the next three are all load balancers. And that last one I mentioned is a little bit weird. It's more of an API, but it interacts mostly with the load balancers and the interceptors. Except for those two toward the top, 
everything else is actually not tied to XDS. It's pretty XDS independent. There, whenever we're implementing it, there will potentially be some XDS glue that we put in. So like the actual implementation process for XDS might have some code, but that is, that, that's specific to XDS, but that's just plumbing. Um, these things, the core of the functionality is available outside of XDS. And you get to see some things like that in the GRFCs, which I mentioned were our change proposals. Uh, outlier section says that it is usable by non-XDS GRFC users. And uh, least request LB says it can be used without XDS in the future. Uh, in the future, we'll come back to that. So we've got all these things. Uh, how about those two at the top? Um, what, what about those? Why were those sort of more XDS uh, specific? So credentials are a little interesting in that they don't have any configuration sort of plumbing in gRPC themselves. Normally you construct them with an API, then you pass them into gRPC. And we don't want a generic API generally for credentials because you shouldn't be getting that elsewhere. You don't want to look up, oh, how should I connect via, via TLS from DNS? And then you're like, like what's, what's the point? You, that DNS is not secure. You might as well just be, use, be using plain text. So these sorts of things, instead of having you tying exactly into the same code flows that we'll use for XDS, instead there will be an alternative implementation, separate, or not necessarily alternative implementation, but definitely separate APIs that we'd use. Sometimes it's separate implementation, sometimes not. And so in this case, it'd be the advanced TLS APIs that we'd use. Um, service authorization. Similarly, interceptors also don't have a generic uh, uh, configuration flow. And so this would, these sorts of interceptors would also be a separate API that you would just use directly. And we would just, they can be the same implementation underneath, but we will expose it a separate way. This one's a little bit special though, because the configuration that X XDS provides is actually really, really expansive. And we do not want to provide that for, for very long term support. Um, and so for this API, whenever we exposed it to gRPC users not using XDS, it is a much simpler API. It still uses the same engine behind the scenes, um, but it, it doesn't have absolutely everything. Some parts of it you just don't need. It's for REST things so that just aren't very interesting or reverse proxy, just who knows what that traffic is. They've got a lot of various features. Other things you might be like, oh, that, that might be a little more interesting. I wish that was added. That, that could still happen. But if we're sort of taking everything overall, looking at all the features that we are talking about, and you're like, ah, oh, I really wish uh, this, this feature was not available. Or I could just use it outside of XDS. Why is it not or something? The, the biggest reason most likely is that no one's asked for it. We do definitely care a lot about what people are asking for. And so if you're interested, heck, if for a feature in XDS or a feature outside of XDS, and you see there's something on the other side or interested, then it's mainly probably no one's asked for it. If, if people are asking for it, then it, a lot of these are pretty easy to expose in the other realm. Um, if it's not that, though, then there's two normal sort of cases, or not normal, but the two outlier cases would be it integrates too tightly into XDS in some way. There is quite a lot of configuration, and sometimes they will assume other parts of the system. XDS has its own architecture, and some things we just don't have an analogous concept in gRPC. So clusters, for example, we have those, they work in the XDS space, but there's a bunch of XDS specific plumbing to make that happen, and it's just not a concept that makes sense whenever you're not in that space. There will be some different concept that you will probably have to create for that. And then as I said, uh, some, some things are just really expansive in XDS. It's a very large API. And XDS does have the potential to change some over time. As more people use it, that's obviously got to slow down. Um, and it's not like things are getting deleted every, every month or so. But XDS does have a potential to change over time versus the normal gRPC uh, stability, which we, we take a very long-term view to that. And that also means we're gonna have to be conservative, more conservative at times. And so that might skew our, our decision-making on exactly what gets exposed. Uh, with that in mind, we can go ahead and do some Q&A. Um, I've got the links here again, and remember that you can download those slides. Questions? Yes. 
Um, Sergey's coming. Yeah, we'll wait for the mic. Because there's lots of people watching online, right? <laughs> Hundreds. <laughs> Thanks for the talk. Um, I don't know much about the plugin system in gRPC, mm -hmm. but could you talk about the extensibility? Um, like, I come from Envoy, and you know, we have filters, we have Wasm, and mm -hmm. you can specify XDS to plug in your own implementations. Does gRPC have any mechanism like that, or is all this XDS features just what you guys implement? Um, so, so the question, so Envoy, uh, gRPC does have interceptors. Those are very, very similar to, to the filters that exist in Envoy. Um, and those are very, very heavily used. So that's the number one interception point in, in gRPC or in, in injection point. Um, there are some other things like load balancing policies, which are eventually maybe going to be pluggable in, in Envoy as well, but they're definitely pluggable in gRPC, um, well, mainly in, the, in Go and Java. And then name resolvers are also another way for if you're wanting to look up addresses another way. But I think we're out of time. Yeah, and we are basically out of time. Um, and so Eric and I will be out in the hall along with all the other maintainers on gRPC. And so if you do have questions, meet us out in the hall. We'd love to meet you, talk to you, and, and help answer your questions. So thanks very much, everyone. Thank you for coming.